In this lesson, we are going to look at the titanium environment and create our first program and essentially um, explore this, uh, this environment that's, uh, that can be used to create uh, both iOS and Android applications. So uh, the first thing that I want to do is uh, just kind of talk a little bit about the environment and what you get uh, once you've started up um, Titanium. Um, if you are a developer, um, this environment should look somewhat familiar to you uh, if you've used Eclipse because uh, Titanium is indeed an extension to uh, Eclipse, uh, a, a custom uh, extension to Eclipse. Um, there's a number of things here to kind of point out, um, uh, part of which uh, was explained in one of the previous podcasts for doing a sort of setup of Titanium, uh, but um, here looking under the configuration tab you can see uh, whether or not uh, you've got your system set up to run both Android and iOS. Uh, I am running here on a Mac and so I do have iOS support here. Um, uh, if you are running a PC, then you will only be able to do development of Android applications. Uh, one of the th other things I wanted to point it out point out here is that uh, you do have access to a number of different videos that have been created by the Accelerator Corporation um, that you can use to uh, uh, to learn more about um, about uh, Titanium. Uh, including a link to the API, API docs. Uh, so if I click on that link, I get a, uh, a browser window within which I can get access to uh, the documentation for, um, uh, for this, uh, this programming environment, uh, and specifically the language that uh, is used uh, uh, for developing all these applications and, uh, and anyway, we'll go into depth on how to actually read some of these documents and some of the features of them in a later podcast. Okay, so what I want to do uh, here is uh, create a new Titanium mobile project. I'm right-clicking on this environment in here, this part of the environment um, under the Project Explorer, you can also use uh, File New to create a new Titanium mobile project. I'll do this here, Titanium mobile project, and I'm going to give it a name, Hello World, and then a reverse uh, URL for the application. Um, And this app ID is the app ID that you would use for you would use for deploying the application to uh, the respective app stores. So either the uh, <clears throat> Android Market or uh, I guess Google Play um, or the um, uh, the Apple iTunes Store. Uh, so you need a unique app ID that uniquely identifies the application that you've created. Um, Make sure that you identify which SDK version. I'm using the most recent one, at least the most recent one of the time that I made this uh, uh, this particular movie. Um, I'm going to unselect iPad and unselect mobile web and just develop for iPhone and Android. And then under cloud settings, I'm going to unselect that and I don't need to uh, use any of the cloud services. Um, going to go ahead and click on next. Uh, you have the option of creating uh, the program um, using one of their uh, project templates. So you can select on that and then choose one of the available templates. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select one of them here and uh, we'll just go ahead and compile and run the program. Uh, later we'll start creating our own um, Appseller, sorry, Titanium programs, and uh, we'll start from scratch rather than using one of these uh, one of these templates. Um, but uh, anyway, so this is uh, um, this is what I'm going to select for now is tabbed application. Click on finish, and this will 
create the project over in the Project Explorer. It just takes a moment here for that to all happen. Uh, when you've created your program, you'll notice here that the um, uh, this tie app uh, editor comes up. This is uh, an editor for this file, this tieapp.xml. Uh, you can actually view the, the actual XML by clicking on this tab here at the bottom uh, or click on the overview where you can use sort of this, um, this wizard looking thing to, uh, to make um, modifications to the, uh, uh, to the configuration. So I'm going to put in a URL here for uh, for the publisher uh, and then go ahead and leave everything else the same for uh, for this application and I'll go ahead and save this um, now the files that are created uh, in this particular case since we're using a template there's a number of files that are automatically generated uh, every application that you create will have an app.js um, file in it and then everything else that's in here is essentially specific to whatever the template was that we were using. Uh, so a number of different files that at the moment probably won't make uh, very much sense. Uh, there's some image files. Under iPhone and Android, these are uh, typically device-specific images that are going to be used, um, at least as far as how the templates, are, uh, the templates that you get from Accelerator work. Uh, under the UI directory, this is where all of the uh, uh, this, the code specific to this uh, this template um, have been placed. Um, we'll use a similar kind of uh, of scheme when we're creating our programs. Um, but uh, for the most part, everything is just contained underneath resources, and then app.js is the file that every program that's created uh, needs to have. This is sort of the launching point for the application. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here right now that uh, is specific to this template that have been cre that's been created. Uh, I don't want to focus that on that right now. Um, we'll look at that when we create our first uh, our first program. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and compile and run this. Uh, so uh, if you look at the top of uh, the Project Explorer, there's a number of icons here. The second one from the right has the run. Uh, menu and uh, you see here that we have both emulators and devices. Uh, the easiest thing to always do is of course run everything on the emulator. We'll look later at how to target a specific device for running the application. But let's for now just run this in the iPhone simulator. Um, now the uh, the environment does support uh, both Android, at least when you're running Mac, it supports both Android and iOS. Uh, I find that the iOS simulator takes uh, a lot shorter to run. Uh, it is because it's a simulated environment uh, rather than Android, which is an emulated environment. So with the emulated environment, you're actually running a virtual machine that is supposed to mimic the hardware of uh, of an actual uh, Android device, whereas the iOS simulator is just simulating that environment. Anyway, let's, uh, as this gets started, this will just take a moment. Um, just a couple of other things I want to point out about this, uh, this interface. You'll see here at the bottom part of the screen that there is um, a uh, console menu or a console window that's going to give us messages about compilation as well as execution of our programs. Um, you'll see here, uh, you see here that it's just notified us that it's launching the application in the simulator. That's going to come up on my desktop here in a second. Here it is. So here is uh, the Hello World program that uh, again is based on a template that we got from uh, the uh, uh, the template that we got from um, from our uh, opening screen wizard. Okay, so it has here a tab, a couple of tabs, for home and settings. I click on open new window. It opens up a new window. So obviously not anything real earth shattering here, but uh, uh, you'll see here that uh, you know just using this environment uh, um, out of the box, directly out of the box, that we're able to get this to run in the iPhone simulator. Uh, let's try the Android emulator. Again, this takes a little bit longer to execute. Uh, I already have the emulator running uh, here. 
uh, it's going to now just try to target uh, the uh, the emulator for executing the the program. Let's see if we're successful at this. Sometimes it takes a couple of executions for the uh, emulator to actually run your program. Let's see here. Let me try it again. Still not running it. Same messages I get. It's the same messages. Sometimes I have to actually. Okay, it looks like it's working. Again, uh, because the uh, Android emulator is executing versus the simulator, the, the emulator is actually emulating the hardware. Um, so it has to go through a few more cycles before you can actually get the program to, to execute. Um, I guess doing an installation on the emulator, and hopefully here in a second we'll see the actual program running. moment. There we go. It tells me it's launching. Deployed application should be running. Okay, I'll believe it when I see it. If I have another instance of an emulator running, okay. Hmm, okay, it looks like it's, it's just about getting there. Well, I don't see it, so let me try this. Let's try it again. Okay, this is the iPhone simulator. Um, all right, so let's try the Android emulator again. Starting up. See the uh, the Android emulator window has appeared. It's just a moment. I typically find that if I run the emulator um, and have the emulator up running before I try to do any deployments that uh, things go a lot quicker but if I have to start up the the emulator in addition to getting the application deployed on here that it runs a little bit slower um, I actually like to deploy directly to the device um, and test on the device that's Kind of hard to display or or to uh, uh, to show when I'm creating a a podcast like this, um, but anyway, should just take another moment.
and just in a second I think I'm going to I may just give up yeah that seems to be taking too long all right so anyway um, trust me it does work uh, it's just running a little bit slow here today um, but we do have this thing running in the uh, uh, the iPhone simulator and again it's just a basic thing that's uh, created by the uh, um, by one of the templates when you uh, create a new program um, again so to just kind of review what we did here in this podcast I created a new application uh, did that using the new uh, and then selecting titanium mobile project uh, and then we get the uh, the wizard that basically allows us to configure uh, the application. Uh, again, I deselected the cloud settings um, because I didn't need to use any of the cloud services for the application. Um, we talked about the environment, the things that you see within the, uh, the Eclipse environment. You see the Project Explorer. Uh, we have the main file editing area and then the console area here at the bottom. And then uh, we did look at how to actually execute the program. Um, using either the Android emulator or the iPhone simulator. Um, so anyway, that concludes this, um, this podcast.